We still have one minute to go. So when I'm sharing, maybe someone can just admit the other people who will be joining. I'm okay. doing that, Carolina. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so I go. I go back to the presentation. Can you still see my screen? Yes. Right, so let's just wait maybe one minute more. Can someone just confirm that you can still see that the recording is being done? Yes. Mm, yeah? yeah. All right, perfect. Okay. So I guess we can start. Um, welcome to the webinar this morning. Um, the webinar will cover the topic of introduction to additive manufacturing using metal to aerospace avionics industry. And we are a team working in the EU project Manuela. Um, my name is Karolina Kazmierczak and I work at Schalmesh Industrie Technik in Gothenburg, Sweden. Uh, and together with the colleagues, we will uh, make a short presentation. We'll talk about open call for that is in the project that might be interesting for some companies. And then there's time also for discussion. So I pretty much covered the agenda. You can see we planned one and a half hour. We'll see how it's going. Um, and you can see the parts, how the split will be done. So we'll make short presentation. Then Lash from Shalmesh will talk about the, the additive manufacturing possibilities in Manuela project. Um, then our colleague Emmanuel uh, will talk about, uh, sh make short presentation of use cases from the aerospace, sec aerospace sector that we have uh, in the project. Edward will talk about some benefits of additive manufacturing and unique selling points. Uh, and at the end, Paul will uh, give a presentation, introduction to the open call that we have in the project. And last half an hour, more or less, we have uh, dedicated for discussion and questions and open points and so on. Um, and that's again the, the introduction. So as I said, uh, we will introduce AM possibilities uh, with a focus on the aerospace industry here. and. Uh, talk about the offerings for the aerospace sector via open call. So, Lars, you can start. Should I share your pages right now or or you want to take over the whole presentation? I think I can start the presentation. Uh, that's easier for me. I have a number of slides that I want to share and then we can have okay. that step. So you start can, it. all right, I'll that's stop that's sharing. I think that would be easier, right? Uh, I think they do. We do I that. actually stopped sharing. And I also share tray. And then. Uh, yeah, now we can see your screen. Maybe I can just everybody else to mute themselves. Sorry for that, but it's um, that we don't have any any background noise. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Lars Nybar. I'm at Chalmers University Technology and I'm the uh, scientific and technical coordinator of the Manuela project. So I will do a brief introduction of some uh, highlights, I will say, before we let other people uh, address uh, the added uh, things about the open call and also benefits of AM that I think Edward will, will um, provide later on. Yeah. I might jump into some benefits of AM also on a very general set, uh, level. Uh, the, of course, and they are already here, right? Yeah, but we can start with them. Pro probably you are well aware, some of you and some are not, uh, but let's say that uh, we talk about Metal AM, we have the really capability of doing innovative and flexible product design. So the geometries that we create might be completely different. Uh, if you do it in the right manner, uh, we can get optimized material utilization and hence we actually use efficiently the raw material. Uh, if you do it in the right manner, we can also account some kind of energy cost savings. If you do it in the right manner, 
uh, we can eliminate uh, manufacturing steps and we can uh, also make sure that there will be reduced lead times. And of course, since additive manufacturing is based on digital uh, information uh, to various extents, it's much easier to change the product design and hence there is an enhanced product differentiation you can build in your platform much easier than if you would be sticking to other technologies. Uh, so these are some benefits. When you look on the key innovations of Manuela, this European project we're running, we are focus a lot to make sure that the powder is there and be recyclable. It's only metal powder based. So it's powder based processes. We work what we call a dashboard, and I think that will be referred to later on here or can be discussed. Uh, we work with workflow optimization, automation. There are some quite a lot of effort to retail process monitoring. And hence, this also adds the qualification certification. Uh, and so that means that we expect to have a number of post Manuela pilot line offerings and we can come back to that uh, later on. But I mean, the key point is that we have some offerings that could be beneficial for the potential user of the technology. Uh, how then the services? That means that what we are building up or basically has built up is both the hardware layer uh, where we have all the aspects of the machinery, uh, and also the different, the whole post AEM processing chain around different partners across Europe. And hence at the end, of course, qualification standard, standardization. And we also have, are, have built up a software layer where we uh, will and have actually come quite far in implementing digital twins and dig, uh, virtual machines in the cloud to be able to run this uh, digital flow in parallel or pre prior to setting up uh, whatever flow of part we are interested to deal with through the hardware layer. And then of course there are some ser service offers and health and safety environment aspects also in this uh, project. Uh, Shell machine the street technique, that's why Carolina is the uh, key person here, will act as a node. So that means that when we talk about offerings that we can provide to the community and across Europe, Shell machine the street will act as the front activities including all uh, relations and there be behind child machines the industry technique there will be the uh, sort of solution providers and uh, that means that the relation between what we can call a client and the manuela will be through child machine industry technique uh, who will then make sure that everything is there behind from the different solution providers uh, design tools for manuela i think uh, manuel is here from csm but I mean, these are aspects that we talk about optimization, manufacturing, tasks, as you know, orientation support, the optimization of topology and manufacturability, and also including, of course, the full range of part manufacturing simulation. So we understand that we, when we're going to print the part, we also have it under control how it's going to be printed and how stresses and, and load cases are there so that is secured. Uh, the other thing that means that that means that there are a design flow from develop and there is also another one that is unqualified. So the design flow is design optimization and process simulation. And hence then we talk about qualifies. This is about testing analysis and getting data that can run in parallel. So of course, in addition to this, we have the making the parts right here. Yeah? So that means there's a lot of efforts that have been placed in what we call the dig dashboard digital thread management. Uh, I don't, don't go into details about this, but this means that uh, a customer will get in access or connection to the workflow <coughs> management and, uh, and hold the dashboard. So that will be integrated and is integrated today and will be further developed. And that dashboard is then having uh, elements like topology optimization, the multidisciplinary simulation, the post processing orchestration, and also testing management. So everything like that is going to be is running through uh, the uh, dashboard. Uh, some resources that are there. We have another machine, the Chalmers. I don't go into details about this. They will be further developed, and there will be new machines actually coming already next year. Uh, so the capabilities are there, both for metals and polymers. I also show for polymers because in some cases it's interesting to start with prototyping uh, the polymeric printing before we go into the metal printers. The same holds for 
Polito that has a number of uh, machines, including also larger scale machines like the M1400 machine. So, and uh, you can also see the, the materials that can be built in the different machines here. Uh, also, of course, EBM and laser party bed fusion. And also that holds also other resources at Polito. There's gas atomizing, a HIP unit, ovens for post-processing, and also, as I said, for Chalmers, a number of machines where you can work with pollen-based based AM also. But that's also important, for, because in the early stage, it might be so that you, you do some initial prototyping in a polymeric machine before you go into the metal printers. Uh, RICE is included here, RICE IVF in Sweden, and they have also a number of printers. They have SLM solution printers and some uh, other polymer printers. And then we have FAO, also an airline, and they have a number of VBM printers. I don't know why we did not have them here, but I can sh share that later on. Uh, uh, we can add that, Carolina. Okay. It, it is in the presentation I have, so I can share it. You can share it later on, yeah. What I'd like to add here is a little bit of aspect that our uniqueness of, of Anela. Uh, in Erlangen, uh, I don't know if Daniel is here, he can tell more about it. There is a unique way of doing quality control where you have something called ELO, where you can do a, use the electron beam to, to actually monitoring what is happening in the build process and thereby controlling your defects and more optimizing your build uh, process in uh, in sort of one step in a build chamber. We use the examples where you have used the ELO image of a dense to the left and porous part to the right. That of course means different print parameters. And the same at, as you can see on the right where you use the ELO technology to see a full, fully dense part and more of an even test sample that is built on the right hand side. And you see directly that the ELO allows you to directly capture whether your process in, is optimized or not. Uh, if there are further questions about this, and this of course is connected to, to the, the um, capability that you are talking about and providing. Uh, the other quality control is in lysi pedivet fusion, where we have the latest uh, technology from EOS, EOS state models. Uh, here I just give you a few examples. This allows uh, specific feature control connecting to overheating or support, thermal distortion. You can capture that in line. Uh, we have also the imaging capabilities to directly implement potential recoating failures. And we hold these technologies also allow us to depict what can be uh, issues connected to what we call spatter, spatter control. And it also allows us, as you look, look on the right hand side in the bottom, to more rapidly set up design process window and understand the thermal load depending on the designs that we want to print. But hence, this is a quite powerful tool to add the quality uh, control and quality assurance of development in the laser party bed fusion. That's also connected to the offerings that we are talking about. Uh, I give you a number of examples on innovation capabilities you can uh, expect from these type of things. And I will do it mostly connected laser party bed fusion, but this is just giving us an example. The first thing is the actual increased productivity that we can offer. Here you see two dummy components that are built with what we call a standard layer thickness. One of the important ways to increase the productivity is to boost the layer thickness. But the key point is to be able to boost the layer thickness without compromising quality. And that is done here. So if we have standard layer thickness, say 20, 40 micro, that is a laser party by fusion. If we just boost this to 80, 100 micro, and this means that we are reducing the build time three, four times in practice for a specific component. And this you see here, these are two components built, exactly the same component, built on the same build plate uh, with the same, uh, in the same build. But one is built with 40 micrometer layer thickness, one is built with 80 micro, micrometer layer thickness, hence, hence roughly double the, uh, the, the, the build rate. And these both are built in alloy 718, a material that's of course of interest for aerospace. They are both fully dense. And the key point here with going to details is also that the, the scan strategies that have been applied here are such that the surface finish is actually the same in both cases. And also the overall relative density is the same in both cases. So hence we are talking about here 
capabilities of building high quality parts with much higher build rates and also if needed and when needed uh, connect that with a nice surface finish and this is an example uh, in this picture where where you illustrate that the parts are not so big but you can see them at least in a way the capability that is possible and rather complex in a, in this these are dummy parts that are designed for testing capabilities, not real parts. One other thing that I think I want to share to you is actually an innovation offer. That is through this kind of uh, technology that we are sitting on. We have a high performance and quality control and porosity control. I'll just give one example of this. Uh, this is uh, two kind of builds done in the same type of machine with a layer thickness up to 80 micron. What is done here is the measure the cumulative discontinuity content, that's basically defect content. And you see, of course, it's always like this, that you may have a length of, disc of defect or discontinuity that is, say, could be up to 50 micron. But you, what you can see here also is the very good quality control of the builds. And this is repeatable that we can secure in this particular case defect content that would mean a nominal relative density of 99.99% density on actually these kind of built parts. So then we talk about how it would be in a, in a different design, but you see here also, this is, is a innovation offer that we can provide through Manuela. And of course, with that innovation offer, also means the qualification properties and testing. I'll just give an example of this. This is done for the type of uh, development I showed in the previous pictures, uh, just the test samples and test cubes that, that are built in the alloy or, or concern Hassel X using the increased layer thickness, all with nominal full dense density. So of course, what you do then is, of course, prior and connected to your built, of, of a real test part, you go and make sure that uh, the cubes, the specimens are either standing up or horizontal, can be built and we can test the properties and also reassure that the mechanical performance or product performance would be as expected for the built uh, set of build parameters of interest. So with this, I would like to conclude my presentation and perhaps Carolina, you can, uh, you can add the slide that I was missing. I'm sorry, Daniel. I, 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 yeah, okay. So yeah, are... we, will, we will make sure that all the pages are there. Oh. Good, thank you, Lars. Um, so then let's I have... think... That's yeah. it. Could I then... Uh, I need to stop sharing, okay? Yes. So this was a little thank bit you. easier, but what I want to share with you also the innovation cap capabilities that we have in place. And I gave you a few examples of the fact that we are now running with high quality, quite more, quite high build rates in these machines that are not the standard parameter settings for that you have uh, if you would go and run these machines uh, in the normal case. And we are combining this with high quality and nominal full density. And that is an offering that we provide through Manuela. Okay. Connectively processed monitoring, online monitoring also. All right, thank you, Lars. Uh, then I share the presentation further, and now it's going to be Emmanuel. Uh, let me share the full screen here. Can you see my screen? Can yes, someone can we... All right, uh, should I run it, Emmanuel? Or... Yeah, you should run it. So... Okay. Perfect. All right. So, right, yeah, so that's a brief overview of what we will present today. So what design tools will be available? What is a standard design flow, especially for aerospace projects? We would like to show you through projects what design optimization can bring and will go through two Manuela development projects, so slippering use case and helmet mounting device example. So go ahead, Carolina. Yes. So to rebound on uh, what Lars was saying, one key advantage of Manuela is that 
the full development process is covered within Manuela. Uh, what the end user arrives with requirements, and here on the left hand side, number zero, and then a design analysis is performed, a design optimization is performed, so we have a new design to be validated by uh, by the partner, by the by the owner of the part to be manufactured. The full process is simulated. So we see how the part will deform. Support position can be optimized. And as Lars was stating before, now we all the machines are to be connected in the Manuela dashboard. So manufacture, manufacturing can be followed in real time. And what I think it's of importance for aerospace projects or aerospace part development, we have, uh, we have in place a part full part tracing. So all parts are marked and uh, every time they arrive in a new place, they are scanned and we know at every time where parts are. We are lucky to have in uh, Manuela pilot line colleagues from MSC software that are in charge of all the software development for design tools. So design optimization, topological optimization rely on Apex generative design and the process simulation rely on Simulfact. But everything now is within what we call the cloud dashboard interface. So we don't have to switch from one software to the other, it's just a, a a flow to be to be followed. So you and yes, so not only in this uh, in this dashboard we have manufacturing machines that are connected to the dashboard, but in a near future all the post processing machine, so like uh, heap remanufacturing, every surface treatment, everything will be connected to the dashboard. So go ahead, Carolina. Yeah, should I? So Lars already showed that design flow, but I will give some more information on it. So when someone comes with a new part to be manufactured, so at first, we will, the user will have to fill in the requirement uh, sheet. We'll have to provide some uh, preliminary CAD file. And based on this requirement sheet and this uh, CAD file, we will have a, um, a starting point, so first general architecture, we will define uh, which part of the part to be manufactured can be optimized. We will run APEC generative design to optimize the part. Once we are happy with the design, once the end user has accepted the, de the design, we will simulate the process. We will see how the part will be built, either huge deformation or not. And in parallel, we will define some test samples so that we can test and optimize the design parameters. We want to be sure that the quality of the part will be within expect expectation and all the materials, all the new materials will be qualified, will be analyzed. Go ahead, Carolina. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So here we'll go through two design examples. This one, this part is a helmet mounting support for a helmet for a pilot. So key optic is UK SME and key optic is very happy to have full support in designing such a part. So key optic just gave us some requirements for the part. And the main target, so the main uh, design parameters was mass optimization. So here you can see as a starting point, we had a bulky part and through several optimization runs, we are able via design to save like for a time being like around 13%. Once we were happy with the design and that's the pictures you have uh, at the bottom, we, we studied where to place the part on the build pad. We optimized the position of the part on the build pad to minimize the number of supports and to minimize the part deformation. And then all we simulated the manufacturing. And right now we are at the stage of uh, manufacturing some test samples before going ahead with the final design. Go ahead, Carolina. Uh -huh. Yes. Another challenging development is uh, the manufacturing of a slip ring for a space application. So that with uh, Ruax Space Switzerland, so we have to manufacture a slip ring. So that's a part that's that is used to bring the power generated by the photovoltaic panels inside the satellite. The slip ring is composed of two main parts, a rotor that's rotating and a stator. And at the origin, this rotor was composed of numerous parts. I can't remember the exact number, but it was composed of a stack of uh, small layers. And thanks to uh, a work performed by our engineers, now the part is just one, uh, one piece. We only have to manufacture one part instead of stacking manually different layers which was very challenging and a key advantage of the new design that all the electric parts are integrated in the design process as you can see here on the left hand side and a big novelty thanks to our colleagues of AOS now we can build this part in copper, which brings high conductivity. So within Manuela, this part manufactured in copper in AOS, but also in bronze with our colleagues of Chalmers, and we will be able to compare the performances of the two parts. So on the top part, you can see the cantilevers that are used to validate the manufacturing process. Go ahead, Carolina. Yes. And the last part, so that's composing the stator, uh, the slip ring is the stator. So the stator is a good example of what topological optimization can bring and for that we were happy to have uh, the software of our uh, colleagues of uh, MSC. For this part we define design and non-design space so parts where we can run uh, the topological optimization and we started with a bulky part the blue part on the, on the left hand side. 
And there was a huge mass saving, as you can see on the right hand side. And now we received at the beginning of the week the first part that was manufactured by AOS. So we still have to remove the support, so uh, the metal part in, uh, in the middle. So this part was manufactured in, uh, in aluminium. And we, yes, we are quite happy with the mass saving. So as we said, we are manufacturing parts here, for instance, for a slip ring for space application. And we have to follow standard space ECSS procedures. So Rua gave us all the norms that have to be respected and Manuela is now trained to also to follow this, uh, these norms. So with these two examples, I hope that we were able to give you an overview of what uh, the pilot line can do. And yeah, you have to bear in mind that it's not only manufacturing, but we also have all the post-processing. And uh, our colleagues of RISE have now a fully automatized uh, post-processing line. Mm. So that's all on my side, Carolina. Yes, thank you, Manu. You're more than welcome. There will be there will be time for questions, I think, and discussion at the end. So I suggest we go to Edward. And Edward, should I take your presentation? No, I can share it. it be oh, faster. okay. All right. Uh, let me then. I think you can just take over the screen right now. Try to do that. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah. No, so I was just, um, idea was just to give a short overview uh, about additive manufacturing techniques with focus and actually what is used in Manuela and uh, look a bit on applications so you understand a bit of a difference. Uh, so as you know, there is these seven main categories of additive manufacturing techniques uh, from binder jetting, direct energy deposition, material extrusion, material jetting, PBF, sheet lamination and VAT. Uh, but we will focus on three of them that found the uh, largest industrial implementation when it comes to the metal AM, that is the focus of the uh, Manuela project. Uh, so binder jetting or something we call 3D printing is a technique where you use uh, yeah, something similar to the engine printing to print green component and then the component is sintered. Uh, so as you see here, uh, issue or challenges with this technology is that uh, when after the printing you get a green component, pretty brittle, and there it has to be sintered. Uh, when you sinter component because it's a loose packed powder, uh, you come into the issue with uh, uh, pretty large shrinkages, meaning uh, you have to be really good in predicting distortions, but also there is strong effects of overhangs uh, and effect of gravity. And therefore, if you look on industrial application, uh, typically we are limited up to 40, 50 millimeters in the largest dimension uh, if you are going to, to go for the fully sintered material without any kind of the uh, penetrant. Um, so that's that's the part that has to be taken into account, but uh, when it comes to the small components, as you can see here, and this is some valve for the aerospace industry, uh, pretty small as you can see, uh, you can really go into the low scale industrial manufacturing so if you look on digital metal, I think they are production from 30,000 to 300 components per year using this technology. Directed energy deposition uh, has a lot of names, uh, LMD, LANS, EBAM, and so on. And this is techniques where I will focus also on a powder bed, where you have a powder that is blown on a substrate and at the same time it's melted by the laser. Uh, so advantage here is a higher productivity. We are talking about high power lasers. 
up to six kilowatts with a pretty large focus uh, and therefore you can get pretty bill, uh, high build speeds, uh, much higher than for, in comparison with LPBF and so on. Uh, disadvantage so is because you use much coarser uh, process, uh, of course it's compromised a bit of uh, surface finish and tolerances, so therefore typically this type of components are machined then to get to the final shape. Uh, at the same time, once again, it has extremely high buildability and found also uh, more broad applications when it comes to the remanufacturing as well as uh, repair. Uh, so here you can see some components. So what you see here for this skirt made by BAM for the Ariana rocket, uh, what was added here is a strengthening uh, uh, structure. Another example is here when actually you just have to build a bit simpler a structure also for aerospace in Inconel in comparison to the conventional machining that becomes pretty expensive. So, uh, but what I really want to talk today more is powder bed fusion. Uh, and this is a technique that found the largest industrial growth during the last 10 years. And this is process where you use the same powder bed, uh, pre-deposited, and then you have energy source that can be laser, it can be electron beam that selectively fuses regions of the uh, powder bed material. Uh, so advantages here is uh, once again very high precision because of the uh, high focus, uh, high power laser. But uh, what you have to take into account is that uh, because of the high heat involved and because of mechanical of the residual stresses uh, created during the process, support structures are more or less the must in this technology. Uh, anisotropy here is lower than in direct energy deposition, but still present uh, to some extent, and this also has to be taken into account during the design phase. And as mentioned also before by Lars and, and Manu, that uh, here whenever you design for EM for this technology, you always have to think about the whole process, including heat treatment, because this is where you will get your final uh, performing part. As uh, so when you look at the process, uh, what is important to remember here, you always have a support structure that fix, with which you fix your component to the build plate. And as I mentioned, they have two main roles. One is the heat removal, another one is mechanical fiction of the part. And in theory, it's a pretty simple process. You lower your build plate by the level corresponding to one layer, and powder layer is spread, and after the layer is spread, you have a laser uh, scanning the component. Um, so advantage here, as I mentioned, high focus laser, high precision, uh, performed under processing uh, protective gas, meaning that we have very good control of the purity. Build plates typically from uh, 10 inch up to 80 by uh, 40 millimeters. Uh, but the biggest advantage of this technology, as I will show, it's a variety of materials available. Plus, as it is a cold process, you have a uh, very good material recycling, and that's one of the parts that we focus pretty heavily here. Uh, layer thickness, uh, typically you start from 20 microns when you aim for the high resolution and can go up to 80 microns, as was shown before as well, when you aim more on the high build rate. And then you always have to co find a compromise, and I will show you one example later on. Uh, so if you look on this process in real life, uh, you can see it's a uh, fast laser can, but because we print 20 micron layers uh, in time, meaning to build one millimeter, you have to put up to 50 layers. And even if laser scans up to seven meters per second, it's still uh, pretty slow. Uh, so one of the main focus of Manuel, well, actually when we start writing, is was really to make sure that we have a possibility to boost the productivity, meaning increasing the build speed uh, through these processes. Uh, another huge advantage of this technology is quality assurance systems that is not developed in any ASEM technology to the same extent. Uh, and there we have two uh, technologies implemented in Manuela coming from the EOS. It's EOS state exposure routine, meaning that you have CMOS camera making thermal images of the build plate, 12 um, images per second that are uh, sent. Uh, overlapped and what you can see here as also was shown in the last example you can see overheating you can see parts uh, that are defective during the build and then you can make a decision to disregard them or uh, you can simply uh, disregard for the end day because uh, you can clearly identify if there is any issues with uh, uh, defect state 
Another part of the another part is uh, aerostate melt pool. So you can see both systems installed in front of the machines. And here you really follow the melt pool and you measure excitation spectrum. And there you could see any kind of disturbances you will uh, get uh, during the processing. What's important to, to mention here is that these systems are pretty heavy when it comes to IT. Uh, so one build rate will generate about 100 gigabyte of data means that uh, here there is a lot of work really focusing on the data mining and making sure that actually uh, the difference of data are, corrected, uh, are connected to the defect state. So when it comes to electron beam melting, everything is similar. Uh, just instead of laser, you use electron beam. And when you use electron beam, it means that the machine has to be put under vacuum. And another uh, issue that has to be taken into account here is that as it is electron beam, it's a source of the charged particles, meaning that you will also have issue with the charging. And therefore, you have to make sure that the actually your material, your powder is not charging, but conducting heat instead. And therefore, what is done here, as you see, powder is pre-sintered. When it comes to support structure here, they are still required, but to the much lesser extent, because the main role of them is a homogeneous heat distribution, as the powder bed itself actually provides a pretty good support. At the same time, as this high temperature process, you have a stress relaxation during the process. Uh, but so here, after you distribute the powder, you have uh, initial process when you sinter the powder with a uh, low energy, and then you have a second uh, scan when you actually melt the material. Um, so uh, challenge here, vacuum, but advantages significantly higher build rates because you use high power electron beam, but also electron beam has much higher speed than the laser. Uh, a bit of disadvantage is much more complex material development, and therefore, if you look on qualified materials in the market, there are four materials present, uh, but as you saw later, there is some materials that are developed, for example, by FAO already. Uh, so when it comes to application here, you see a different type of components, a lot of focus post on the space antenna, different satellite holders, but now more and more uh, focus is placed on the uh, combustion chambers, and you see it's pretty heavy components, it's 8 40 millimeter, 40 centimeter build place, so it's around uh, 38 centimeters in diameter, and this is up to 70 millimeter height. And as one that is built in the copper alloy, cobalt, uh, copper, uh, cobalt chromium. And what you can see here, it's a very, very good resolution uh, during the whole build, so to say. Um, this is another example from EBM. So as I told you, advantage of EBM is that you have much lower uh, requirement to the support structures, meaning you can also stack the component and in that way further boost uh, productivity. And uh, one of the really strong points of EBM is presence of a copper. But as you also saw in Manuela, US uh, developed a copper alloy for LPBF as well. So meaning there is a two ways to actually uh, approach uh, this uh, pretty fancy material. Um, so if you look on TRL level, you see there is a very uh, additive allows powder bed fusion techniques is a very strong position when it comes to the tooling and medical application as they are more or less uh, in a large scale production there. When it comes to the automotive and aerospace, they are, uh, yeah, I would say climbing up and you, you saw some components, uh, especially taking into account the blades of titanium aluminite blades produced by uh, G coming into the new G engines. Um, so materials, uh, what you can see in this table, it's a summary of materials that are commercially available for these techniques, uh, covering number of aluminum, uh, iron, nickel, and uh, copper alloys. And as was mentioned here, so what was uh, added in Manuela is that there is a copper alloy developed for EPBF, and there is also some uh, aluminum alloy and so on that are developed for other techniques. Uh, so, uh, Something that last showed you before, and uh, to emphasize again, this is a pretty big component. It's uh, about uh, 30 centimeters length, and this was also built with varying layer thickness. And the idea here was that whenever you need a high resolution, where you have a fitting of the component, you build it with a small layer thickness, and then when you really need to push uh, 
buildability in the center of the component and you are not concerned so much about surface roughness or for example in this case where it was a flange because it has to be machined to get a proper fitting then you go to the larger build uh, build, uh, build height up to 80 micron in that way you can get a good compromise of very good build buildability at the same uh, mechanical properties as static and mechanical properties are in place uh, here is another example, it's material development, it's a low alloy steel developed uh, by us uh, together with Volvo. Uh, that was also based using uh, in some way quality assurance system because there you can significantly cut a time for a material qualification. Uh, so that was it, it was a short overview. Uh, from my side, if you have any questions. Or we take all the questions at the end. Okay. All right. Thank you, Edward. Um, and now we go over to Paul. Paul, should I share it? Yeah, please do that. All right. There you go. Full screen. Yes. Okay. Um, well, now my colleagues have um, explained uh, the technical advantages uh, of uh, additive manufacturing for aerospace. Uh, the improvements that we are going to do in the Manuela project to uh, to the possibilities and to the processes. Um, and you have also seen some examples of uh, products actually that uh, that is uh, done in the project. Uh, so in order to um, now validate the um, uh, processes and, uh, and uh, advantages of, of this technology, uh, we offer an uh, opportunity also for companies uh, outside, outside of the project to come in and apply for uh, products and we and we have an open call for that so yeah. you can please uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, so this possibility is targeting European companies uh, and we will select in total 10 different use cases. We call them business development cases. Uh, and each uh, use case will be co-founded by uh, the project and by the applicant uh, at the 50-50% uh, share. Uh, you can apply for your use case uh, through uh, a portal or you, might, you have to do it. And you see the link here in the, in the PowerPoint slide. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, the process or anything that which is unclear, there is also a help desk uh, where you can email to. So mm -hmm. please. And actually, I mean, uh, it's it's enough that you are just uh, interested in in uh, in this process and in this opportunity with your product. You don't have to be an expert. You don't have to go through all the stages if if not necessary. So you can either apply for something uh, which has only to do with um, development, design, or processing, or post-processing. But ideally, of course, uh, we can offer the whole uh, chain from start to stop in, in this project to you. Um, so we hope to get uh, applications, a lot of applications, and we have uh, an evaluation team and evaluation criteria of each uh, application. And uh, our criteria for evaluating and approving uh, the beneficiaries and the winners of this opportunity is will be based on the level of uh, innovation uh, and your concept, the impact and the market potential, and uh, uh, how well the implementation is uh, thought through. There you can shift. Yeah. So uh, the the call is open now. It opened uh, just a few days ago, first uh, of December. Uh, and we have two cutoff dates for the applications. In each of these cutoff dates, we will select five use cases to be implemented. Uh, first cutoff date is the end of March next year, and the second cutoff is uh, end of September next year. So in each of these, we will select five use cases for implementation. And uh, the ones who are winners, we will notified directly via email and we will start to plan for the implementation. So the implementation will be done as soon as possible after the uh, application is, is um, uh, the winner is notified. 
And the, the schedule for the project uh, is such that uh, by, by 1st of June uh, 22, we need to have processed and closed all of these uh, business development cases. Okay. So please, uh, change. Yeah. Um, so the implementation will be done uh, through CIT, uh, Chalmers Industry Technique. We will be the interface with the company and we will project manage the use case internally in the project. Uh, so at the start of this uh, project, you will need to define your requirements. We will together develop uh, flow charge, charts. Uh, we will allocate all the resources. We will do uh, the budgeting and a contract with the company uh, for, for your use case. And internally, we are using a planning tool, which is called Project Place, if you, if you know that. So please change. So uh, yeah, that was basically it about this open call. Uh, so it is open. Uh, if you're interested, maybe if you don't know exactly how to do, just contact us. We will help you to, to make sure that your application is, is included in the right way. And, and there you have the contact uh, either by email or uh, on the Manuela homepage. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Okay. So that was what we intended to present from our side. And now uh, pretty much the floor is open for any questions or comments uh, and the open discussion. If there is anything specific you wonder about, or anybody? Everything seems uh, clear. You can ask any questions related to technology, to the open call. Uh, maybe one thing from my, my side, this, uh, this webinar will be recorded, or is being recorded actually. Um, I think we'll keep it on uh, under our Manuela home site, uh, homepage. And also another thing is I will merge all the presentations into one and send it to all of you. But a question is, I don't, I, I'm not sure if I have all your contact information. So in case you haven't received an invitation from, from me, like the Outlook invitation, um, Maybe you can write here in the chat your contact info so that I can include you in the email list as well. Yeah. Um, any any points from the presenters, maybe, or from from anybody? Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hello. Hello. I'm Akbar from Iran. And uh, thank you very much for your very nice uh, meeting. Uh, I would like to ask you that uh, uh, anybody that's uh, in other fields, for example, I have worked in the field of uh, welding or laser welding of uh, materials, and uh, 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 I would like to know that uh, if I can uh, apply for this position or not. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, I, I guess you mean the open call. Uh, that is open for all European companies, uh, regardless of uh, whatever branch you're in. So you can uh, you can apply as long as you apply from a European company. Uh, or European organization, uh, everyone is, is uh, welcome. Uh, you don't have to be... Well, I guess the question was about uh, the use case field. So today we concentrated on aeronautic, aeronautics, but yeah. it can be biomedical, it can uh, be automotive, yeah. it can be any topic. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, that your la, last, maybe a quick comment, maybe to help people, 
it would be good loss if you if you give an idea of the build chamber, the size of build chamber. Yeah, this is large here. I mean, it can be different. It is uh, machine dependent, right? If you go yes, back to the things, uh, if you look on the the uh, if you look on, uh, for example, the M290, which we have, uh, there is this round. Uh, what is it? 250, 250, 300 or something like that in millimeters. So you saw the build place. Then we have uh, one set of M400 that is at uh, Polito, which is a build, bigger, larger build chamber. So, the, but I, you have to understand also this is the build chamber. I don't know. Uh, and to build with high quality, it might be depending on the build design that we are not able to use the whole built area, right? Yeah. Because it is often so that uh, you say, well, I have a build chamber. This is uh, the nominal build chamber, but uh, you don't use the full build chamber always. So it is, I will say, the total capacity, but I will say that, uh, Manuel, it, it will be also design uh, and material dependent a little yeah, bit. Yeah, but I want to, by that, I wanted to say that Manuela will not be able to build a propeller for a, a tanker, for instance. No, no, of course not. The, 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 the thing that we are investigating, uh, uh, we have one use case we're not talking about, is that, which I think, think will be important to understand, uh, where we are looking on the, this uh, one uh, component that is not possible to build in one piece. Okay. Uh, so uh, where we are investigating to cut it into, say, what is it, Manu? Three pieces, right here? Sorry, but, say it again, Nas. Are we, we are, we're having a part that is not possible to build in any... Yeah, we, we will build it in three parts and we will, we will weld it. Yes, well together. So there are that kind of options also, but then you have to understand that it, it will be that the, the part as such can never be built in the machine, but it might be that you need to have an assembly of different uh, uh, parts of the part, so to say, in the next phase, right? Yeah? And hence you have to have a qualified uh, welding or laser welding or whatever that is part of the solution. Yeah. And, and last, what you will Speaking, there was a question about mixed materials. Well, it's a difficult one. It's a difficult one. I will say that there are certain solutions where you can, uh, depending on machine solution, I don't know if you, Edward, can comment that, where we build on top of pre designed uh, platform, so to say, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not DED, but let's say the powder bed fusion. Uh, but that means that basically you build on top on something that is not AM pr process itself, right? Yeah. But it becomes complicated. And then you need to have, then you have the exactly the same challenge as if you go into welding, that you weld the similar materials. Get my point? Yes. Uh, it's the same thing that perhaps if we have different materials, we can build the different parts, but then you still have an assembly. Yeah. There are technologies developing there to how to fill in materials when you do the building, but uh, I don't know if we uh, should think about that as sustainable. Perhaps there are other comments there. I don't know, Edward, what you want to say, because recycling a material becomes an issue. And I think it will add a lot of cost, right? So I don't know if the cost benefit will be so enormous, but perhaps I'm uh, thinking wrong. Any comments, Edward, for example? I don't know if Edward is still with us. Oh, but I think this is an issue we have to consider that, that the, the potential cost benefit, if you make it too complicated, might not be there, yeah? And then we, we're talking about uh, uh, that that will drive cost. And we are still talking about that at, at, in the beginning, a quite expensive uh, technology. So I think we, we have to find the business cases that, that, that from you, you, you that are interested where uh, we don't add unnecessary cost to the, the design and solution. I don't know what to say, Mari, but this is my... That's fine. This is my thinking. If it's at a lot of cost in the design and manufacture, the business case might not be viable. 
Yes. Yes, okay. So in the meantime, when you were discussing the materials, I tried to share also a table where we, where, which you will find, all of you will find on the website when you go to the open call, there is some presentations attached. There are some presentations attached and one of them is technical possibilities. What, what is possible to, to um, print um, and for post-processing in, uh, in Manuela. So the information about build chambers and also materials is in there as well. Yeah. Uh, do we have any other questions? I, I'm looking in the chat, but uh, no, there's thank you, thank you. And there was building mixed materials. Uh, anybody else, any comment or question? Yeah, maybe if I could have one comment. This is uh, Roman speaking yeah. from 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 Amiras. I'm involved in the uh, in the Manuela project and dealing with the open call as well. Uh, there, there was um, what was mentioned was the eligibility. Uh, of course, not only when it comes to the industrial sector, which is which is fairly open, but also to uh, what are the eligible uh, applicants. So it's companies from uh, from uh, Europe, but not not only Europe. Just to be clear about that, you can find the details uh, about that on the on the website because uh, there are also some associated countries. We are basically um in line with the with the rules of horizon 2020 program in by which the uh, manuela project is funded and uh, in there there's also associated countries so that's israel for for, for example uh, but also some non european uh, countries the list of which you can you can find uh, on the website so that's just to clarify on the uh, eligibility topic good point roman thank you Okay. Uh, anything else? We still have a bit of time, so don't be shy. No. Um, okay. Well, in this case, as as I mentioned, I will send out the presentation. So please. Um, if I, for any reason, don't have your email address, uh, please send it here <clears throat> and or in the chat and uh, the webinar, the recording will be also available. Mm. And thank you to all presenters thank and thank you to all the participants for today. Mm. Thank you, Carol and Carolina. Lars, I did not show my picture before, but now you see what now we can see great you, Lars. hair guy that is sitting here. <laughs> yeah, so Very good. Everyone. Okay, yeah. Thank you. And uh, have a good day, everybody. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.